Now that our samples are capped, they're ready for strength testing. Our 40 compression machine is currently set up to test either beams or cylinders. For the cylinders, we have a floating base and a swivel head that allows for adjustments in non-parallel surfaces. Above the machine, we have a control panel that will record our data, and off to the right are the controls for the hydraulics. Now that I've centered and leveled the sample, I need to manually lower the head so that it's nearly in contact with the top of the cap. Now that the head has been lowered to be nearly in contact with the top of the cap, I need to zero the load and then the test is ready to proceed. The test is run at an automatic metered advance of 0 0.05 inches per minute until the sample has reached a peak load. The control panel displays the increasing load as the test continues. Once the test is completed, the control panel displays the peak load reached. To allow for inspection of the interior of the sample, we'll add an additional load until the sample breaks apart. Now that the sample has been tested and broken, we can remove it from the machine for a closer inspection. The first thing we can observe is the fracture pattern. Notice the diagonal fracture from left to right, top to bottom. There are six typical fracture patterns as shown in this figure. Our fracture pattern most closely matches number four, diagonal fracture. Let's go ahead and break open the sample so that we can view the interior. After breaking open the sample, we can see that most of the coarse aggregate is still intact, meaning that the aggregate paste bond did not fully develop. If it had, we would see more fractured aggregate. Careful observation of the concrete matrix reveals a few small voids. The presence of voids always results in a reduction of strength. This inspection concludes the strength testing portion of the laboratory activity.